Ninety seven ZOK, Steve Shannon show. It's uh seven eighteen. So I've got a friend about to have her first baby. Well, she told me about the book and I said you should just get rid of it. That book that every expectant parent is given as a gift by someone that what to expect when you're expecting. And and then I see the same list in, or list in the same day about the things that new parents will understand. Seasoned parents will absolutely understand it and have mastered and been better than this list. Expecting parents, this is the kind of list that some people would refer to as birth control. I have a seasoned parent on the phone. Let's let's talk about that book. You don't like the book, what to expect what, when you're expecting and, and why. But, I mean, it tells you all the all the nonsense, like what to expect medically, but it doesn't tell you what to expect, like don't go buy butter in bulk and then let the kids get quiet because they, then you end up with two pounds of butter smeared on the cabinets, that kind of stuff. <laughs> I guess for expecting parents, it's not all fear. I mean, there's a lot of it. Along with it is an awful lot of joy. Wouldn't you agree with that? Oh, absolutely. There's nothing better than the first time you hear that baby cry or when you start to recognize the different cries. Yes. Like, oh, he's hungry this time or, you know, oh, she needs a change. And that's kind of cool because you don't really think about that you're going to hear these different cries that mean different things. Yep. Because my biggest fear was I'm not going to know what to do. Did you find yourself becoming more patient and dealing with your parents differently? Yeah, I um, I actually apologized to my stepfather for what I was like when I was 12. <laughs> <laughs> because now that I have, you know, a 12-year-old who's, who's kind of going through his normal 12-year-old emotions, I, I, I said, I'm so sorry for what you had to put go through with me. Oh, man, you got a little karma kid then, didn't you? I, I did. I did. I did. <laughs> uh this is the worst choice you'll ever have to make. Um, sex or sleep? Sleep. <laughs> you'll stay up. You'll go days without a shower. Your hair will have Cheerios in it. And you'll just go to the store like it's normal. That is the truth. You know, you don't need all those nifty, cool gadgets that they're selling now. I mean, like the diaper genie, it was cool and all. Until you go to try to change the liner inside. <laughs> just get a good trash can and take it out every day. God, that thing was horrible. I know, and it's I'm like it sounds like such a good idea. Oh, I'll never have to smell it until you open it to change it. See, now these two things go together, and I'll explain how in a moment. But a diaper genie and the automatic cat box cleaner. <laughs> let me, let me explain. I can totally see that. Okay. You know, because they go together because, you know, uh, women who are pregnant not supposed to be around cat urine and feces and stuff. Mm -hmm. So right. my ex-wife was none too happy to relinquish all of those responsibilities to me. And I thought, oh. while shopping at Target, for 100 bucks, I can get this cat box that cleans itself. Yeah, what they don't tell you is you have to pull out the tray and get rid of everything that is clean for you. And clean the rake, because it rakes the poop before it gets hard and dry. Uh-oh. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I would rather scoop the cat, or yeah. the cat litter. So, yeah, so, you know, here's the thing. Have a baby, get rid of the cat. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Give the cat to Noah's Ark. We'll find a great home for it. <laughs> you don't really need a changing table because, you know, you're going to end up changing the kid all over the house anyway. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but you do need, you need lots of onesies. Yep. But not any of the other frilly outfits because basically they're just going to stay in a onesie all the time and you're going to have to change it eight or ten times a day. Here's another thing on the list, too. The, the piece of the navel... Um, it's not going to come off any time you want it to or where you want it to. Uh, no, it never does. It never falls off like when you can see it. You just have to find it later, like when you're vacuuming the floor, and you're like, oh, it's the belly button. Yes, or in my case, the cat runs by with it in its mouth. Yum. <laughs> <laughs> Poor kitty. <laughs> Hi, is he okay? Hey, um, I was just going to say, I had my first baby um, about 21 years ago, and uh, I read the what to expect when you're expecting, which is fine. Um, but someone told me about this great book that she gives it to you completely straight. It's called The Girlfriend's Guide to Pregnancy. Yeah. And um, she talks about, like, the really horrible stuff and the really funny stuff. It's a great book. It's just as old as the other one. But um, there's times when you're reading it and you're, like, dying laughing. And then it'll say, hand this book to your husband. And then <laughs> it'll just be for him. And he'll read it and laugh. And, like, she says, give it back to your wife. And uh, it's a really great book. It's so good. The Girlfriend's Guide to Pregnancy? Yep. Thanks for the call. The Steve Shannon Show.